<laughs> We're off to a great start here at the Last Fan Standing podcast. This Always. is Last Fan Standing episode number nine. Holy poopies, episode number nine. Holy poopies? Holy poopies, indeed. Yeah. So the Last Fan Standing Wrestling Podcast, of course, uh, if you've been paying attention to the podcast, and for all three of you that have, hey, thank you very much. Uh, if you've been paying attention to it. I don't know, it, people have been talking about it on Facebook. Yeah, that's we, true. We've been having some wicked chairs. We and have. People have been liking us, and it's just been, we're, we've been feeling the Facebook love. A little bit, and, and getting the actual <laughs> group helped. Yeah. <laughs> to feel the Facebook love. <laughs> if you haven't found us, search No Holds Barred Productions on Facebook, and I think we're the only Facebook page under that name, so I we should be so. all set. We're unique. Exactly. Uh, our display picture is a picture of our two hats, which makes it very easy for us to find. So, uh, if you've been paying attention to the Last Fan Standing podcast, you've, of course, known that every time that we do that, an episode of this podcast, we have mentioned the May 11th Twin City Wrestling debut show. Yes, which if you're watching online, I'm holding up a poster. Exactly. We have the, the Twin City Wrestling poster at the Blockhouse Fire Hall. Uh, and we, of course, went to this show. We had tickets that we absolutely paid for and in no way, shape, or form were given to for free. Absolutely. 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 100% uh, legit. 100% <laughs> legit. And it was our, our, our hard-earned money that went, <laughs> went into those tickets. Uh, so we um, showed up for the show. Uh, doors weren't supposed to open at, until at 6.30. First, we were going to film everything. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's bring well, it let's back. Let's start bring with that. it back. Yeah. Let, let's start at the beginning here and, and work our way to the cl- uh, climatic. To the climax? Yeah. It's going to be two hours of unsatisfying foreplay to a quick oh, finish. Oh, man. It's going to be the Lord of the Rings all over again. Ouch. I'm a big Lord of the Rings <laughs> fan, too, but I agree with you. Um <laughs> So yeah, originally that's true. Nick's, ab- Nick's absolutely right. I'm an idiot. Um, originally we were going to film a vlog for this Twin City Wrestling show. So we got together around, I don't know, 10.30, 11 o'clock Sounds in the morning, right. something like that. I woke you up by crawling in your bed. Exactly. And you're like, Nick, not again. I'm like, <laughs> but on the inside, I'm like, ooh. Um, so we, yeah, we get, we got together in the morning and, uh, decided we were going to, do this vlog and that that was kind of the idea that we had in our head was that we were going to do a vlog for it anyway so after about two hours of trying to figure out the best way to do it yeah uh because initially <laughs> what we were going to do is film an opener it's going to be very similar to the the vlog that um that i did on my channel for um for the ucw show uh and um so we were going to film an opener, and we were going to go down to the, the meet and, and greet, greet, and we were going to yeah. do everything like that. The way to the way, and you know, pan exactly. around to the to the crowd, and Sh- uh, get the matches, and yeah. you know, high spots in the matches, and things like that. Yeah, because I actually like that vlog from the first one. I thought it was, I thought it was good. That was awesome. I thought it was cool. Uh, and and the wrestlers seemed to like it too, which was cool. So that was the plan. The plan was that we were going to do that again and uh and everything was going to be all gravy. We could not for the life of us get going on it cuz we couldn't for whatever reason it just wasn't coming together. Like the <laughs> the the intro wasn't coming together. Well, whenever you have you and me behind a camera it, and it, and in front of a camera and in front of a camera. <laughs> It's just it doesn't go well. No, it's just it's we, just the giggles come out and everything that you can think of. Yeah, yeah. and somehow we've produced like thirty hours of podcasts. I, I know, and actually talked about <laughs> things, which is weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just so. I mean, the giggles were out in full force, and we just we just could not, just couldn't get it going. So we we tossed something hastily together, and then. Peaced out and headed down to the meet and greet. Yeah. Because we were going to get some pictures at the meet and greet, do some filming at the meet and greet, and everything like that. So we show up to the meet and greet. Big disappointment. A little bit. <laughs> like, well, well, first of all, we showed up and nobody was there. <laughs> there was yeah. just nobody there. They, I were, don't know they if, were supposed to be there at two. That's what I thought. Um, or no, it was one, one wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, one. And we got there at like 20 after, and there was just nobody. So we were like, oh. Okay, maybe it was either canceled or 
or they just didn't show up or, or whatever it was. So we, we hung around a little bit and eventually people started showing up and what we thought would have been so cool would have been to do some filming with like a bunch, just like with people around. Yeah. Didn't have to be like this huge crowd, like 20 deep or anything, but we wanted to, you know, get some people or whatever. So everybody shows up, including our friend, uh, Doug Robar, who has been on this podcast before. And, uh, <clears throat> he showed up and some of the wrestling talent showed up mm-hmm. like, uh, um, Mark Maverick, Mark Maverick showed up, who yeah. was also on this podcast. The r and Express. The r and Express showed yeah. up, uh, as well as the, um, oh goodness. What was the name of the other tag team? Um, <clears throat> this is embarrassing. L. L-A-H? Last Action Heroes. Yeah. LAH. Thank you very much for that. Last Action. It's 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 super embarrassing for me to not remember that and we'll get to that in a minute. Um but yeah, so the, that that other tag team showed up along with their valet Fire. 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 Um <clears throat> who's gorgeous by the way. Um so they show up and just nobody seemed to care. It, nobody seemed to care and I mean I, I guess if they put it in a better spot than down at the A at the A&W, and W, yeah, Maybe. and if they announced it a little bit better oh over the God. PA. <laughs> okay, we should. We'll pause here, and Nick laughs for good cause because it was it was so pathetic. It was funny. Attention, customers! There are wrestlers <laughs> at the A and W, <laughs> so you can go see them. It was like <laughs> it, 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 they almost made it sound like it was a circus act, like it, like it, like it wasn't just like a meet and greet with actual people, you know. Mm. Like so, Doug Doug goes down to the lotto booth where the um, where the PA system is, and <clears throat> so he he goes down and he asks them if they would make an announcement, and the girls that work at the lotto booth in the PA uh, like. First of all, they're older ladies, not mm-hmm. old ladies, but older ladies. So, I mean, it's not certainly not something that interests them. But at the same time, you know, you're, you've got a job to do. So, you know, just do it. Yeah. But they uh, the, and, and you know what? The way that Nick did that was pretty well exactly <laughs> how it sounded. It was pretty much exactly that. It was just like, attention, uh, Bridgewater Mall shoppers. There are some wrestlers. Down at A and W, so you can go down and uh, see them and meet them, and that was pretty much it. And it's just like, well, first of all, you're going to scare the old people <laughs> by saying like, "There's wrestlers at the A and W." They're going to be like, "Oh yeah. my god!" Um, and 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 run away. Well, waddle. Yeah. Um, the people weren't running; they were like sitting around them. Yeah, and that's that was the thing too. Like it was literally in this A and W. Like it wasn't even like in front of the A and W. It was literally in it. So mm. there's like customers going around the wrestlers to sit at a table to eat their Papa Burger with cheese. And it's just like <laughs> this is poorly thought out. <laughs> just a little bit. Like. It, it's not. It wasn't a bad idea to do a meet and greet. It was just maybe not necessarily the best location. Yeah. So, needless to say, we didn't do any filming there. No, we so, uh, we stood there for a long while. We did. We stood we there for a to, long while. Uh, we talked to Doug and talked Doug. to Mark. Yeah, and 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 that was pretty much it. And that was that was the end of it. So we're like, okay, well, we have a poorly filmed intro, <laughs> and we have nothing at all from the meet and greet. Like, so we're really we, going to have to poorly filmed intro we had to do we, we were going to do the intro again because yeah. we were just going to cut out the whole meet and greet yeah it's, yeah we were just going to redo the whole intro so we're like man we're well we're going to have to get some really good stuff at the actual event hmm. so we call our cab to go from bridgewater to blockhouse it was like 20 bucks which yeah. is not bad not bad at all so we call the cab and we get there. The doors weren't supposed to open until what six thirty. Yeah. So, so the doors weren't supposed to open until six thirty, but we showed up at about five thirty. Five thirty, yeah. Because we were thinking like we can we can get there and we can refilm our whole intro at the actual venue, which will be maybe better creatively. Yeah. Rather than just doing it in my house. Um. So we we get there early and um up by the talent entrance. We see Doug and uh, actually a guy we graduated high school with, Blair Culp, who was helping out with the show. Yeah. And just 
talking, chatting. Yeah, they were just talking. Whatever. Doors so like, were open, so it's we like, went hey, up cool, let's head like, over. Yeah. Which, in retrospect, was a bad idea because then all the other fans that were there started heading that way too, because oh, yeah? they saw us go that way. So it's just like, is is the doors open yet? Doug had to just be like, the doors aren't open. Go away. Like, <laughs> get away from the talent entrance, please. Nice. So I mean, we kind of walked over, and we probably shouldn't have, but whatevs. Um. So, yeah, so we show up and uh, we're walking up the steps and Doug looks at me and he says something akin to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we, 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 we have a little sound clip of Doug from when he was on the podcast, uh, just like making that noise, that just making that thing that I just did there, that shnia. <laughs> And uh, it's just it's it's too good. We 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 giggle at it every time it happens. Anyways, back to the story. Okay. Uh, so we're we're walking up the steps, and Doug says something to me akin to, like, uh, Justin, uh, I need a big favor, or is like I got I got something for you or something. So they get like, okay, maybe this is maybe they need somebody to help them set up the ring. Like maybe this is something cool that we can actually add to yeah. the vlog. Doug's like. The guy that was supposed to be doing the announcing, and I started shaking my head as soon as he said the word announcing, Mm. because I knew what was coming next. So I was just like, I was just shaking my head. And he's like, the guy that's supposed to do the announcing bailed, so you're going to be my announcer tonight. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm just like, fuck, do I ever regret knowing you. (laughs) (laughs) Which is not mean, because I actually said it to his face. (laughs) But it's just like, oh my God, like I'm just, as you can hear, like I kind of had a little cough there. And that's why we didn't do any podcasts last week, because I was, had my second flu in two months, which was a piss off. But like, and my throat was fucked up and I was coughing and everything like that. And I was like, look, Doug, man, I've been sick. Like I can't really do this and he's like oh mm. he was just like no you're not sick you're not sick you're gonna do it you're gonna do it yeah and eventually i was just like well fuck. and i okay. was coaching you into it you were it's like you, you absolutely it, were nick nick was absolutely being that little fucking devil on the shoulder <laughs> that was just like you're doing this you're doing this and you're gonna do this hardcore and i was like oh fuck normally this is where the angel shows up <laughs> but we bitch slapped that motherfucking sin pack exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's what Nick does to the angel that's supposed to tell you not to whip your dick out. But uh but yeah, so eventually I was just like, fuck, all right, I'll do it. Fine, great. So I thought by doing this, well, first of all, after after I said yes, we were whisked basically to the backstage area. Yeah. Uh where not not all the talent had shown up yet, but the majority of them were there. Oh yeah. So I mean we saw in uh dazzling dick durning and uh girl papa slash and just like the guys that you were were advertised on the marquee which is always nice oh yeah so they're all back there getting changed looking at me like i got fucking six heads like what the fuck are you doing here fat ass (laughs) and i was just like you better be nice to me i'm announcing you guys tonight (laughs) right so they're like oh oh, oh." because as every professional wrestler will tell you they're the nicest to the announcers that's not true uh (laughs) but yeah so we uh we show up and uh i figured that they would have information for me yeah because I, cause I go in and I'm just like, I don't know who any of these guys are. Like, I don't I don't know any of you. Like, I I, I, I try to follow Maritime Indie Wrestling, but I don't follow it very closely. Right, right. So I'm just like, I have no sweet clue who any of you are. And then Doug told me that uh, J.P. Sims and Sexton Phoenix were going to be on the show. And I was like, okay, well, at least I know who they are. Mm. Like, at least I can know who they are to see them. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, I know what sexton looks like sexton looks like a little emo kid <laughs> uh, and i know what J- and i know what jp looks like I, I i rib i rib sexton but uh just as a little aside here i actually think sexton phoenix and you can put this down on record i actually think sexton phoenix was one of the best workers at that show almost absolutely and that's not saying that any of the other workers were bad that's just that's how good sexton is so uh, i i got i got nothing but love for sexton but i like to rib him because <laughs> Oh, well, we commercial well, free. Commercial free. We started with yeah. the whole commercial free thing, and we, I mean, you just you can't just stop. Uh. <laughs> so, anyways, um, but yeah, so I mean, I, so I know what Sexton looks like, and I know what JP looks like. Mm-hmm. Other than that, the only people, the only way I know how what anybody looks like is the guys that are on the marquee. Yeah. 
And like the guys that are on that poster is uh, Pat Persuasi, who is one half of a tag team. Uh, Girl Papa Slash, who is probably the biggest guy in the locker room. So he's he was easy to, to figure mm-hmm. out. Uh, and Julius Fantana, who wore a mask, who was the only yeah. guy on the roster that wore a mask. So, okay, great. But at the same time, I don't know where any of these guys are from. No, I don't know what they have weigh. Nothing. Like, holy shit. I have, I have no information whatsoever. Like, I mean, I could I could announce a WWE show a lot easier than I could have announced that because I know where these guys are from and I can recognize them and all that stuff. Almost that stuff. absolutely. So I mean, shit came together. I mean, you had yep. a notebook that uh, had little to no information <laughs> in it. I had a notebook that, that you had to go around and be <laughs> like, "Where you from? Exactly. What's what your weight? <laughs> What's your eye color? What's your sign, big guy?" <laughs> Um, <laughs> God. Um, but yeah, when when I got that notebook, all that it had in it was it had uh, Girl Papa Slash, it had uh, the information of some dude that wasn't even wrestling a match that night. No, no, he was in the Battle Royal, but he wasn't wrestling a ah. match. So it had his information in it, which is totally fucking useless. Mm. Um, it had, uh, I think it had uh, Dick Durning's information in it. I think it had some of JP's information in it, which, by the way, JP Sims was the big surprise guest. Okay. Like, nobody knew that JP was going to be there. And anybody that knows maritime wrestling knows, well, ooh, JP Sims, the UCW champion. Right. But not anymore, because now he... It, it, I don't know if you follow him on Twitter, or if you watched his Twitter account. Uh, not recently. Okay. Yeah. I think he he went on either Twitter or Facebook and was just like, I'm never working for UCW again. <laughs> This is like wow. sweet, right on. So I mean, that's that's kind of a, that was a nice coup there for Twin City Wrestling to pick up uh, their their main quote unquote competitions champion. You know what I mean? So that was so that was pretty cool. So but he so he was the surprise guy, and I think Julius Fantana's information was in there too. There's 20 guys on the roster. That's information for four guys that's in actual matches. Mm. So I'm like, well, fuck. Okay. <laughs> At the very least, they had the sign there. That showed what the matches were. Yeah. Showed who was going over. Showed who was refereeing it. So we had. So at least we knew what the matches were, and we knew how they were going to go. But still, I had to go around to either Doug or the actual wrestlers themselves, and just mm-hmm. be like, "What's your name?" First of all, "What's your name?" And God, do I ever hate asking anybody that, much less a fucking professional wrestler. And I'm going to be announcing them tonight. I'm sorry. Yeah. What's your name? Can you imagine, like, somebody <laughs> somebody just gets hired on to, to WWE doing their very first house show. They walk in backstage, and they go up to John Cena, and they're like, what's your name? And he's just like, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, basically. I am super Cena. I can make this decision. <laughs> you are fired. So I felt like a douchebag, just like. Well, I mean, it's. <sighs> You you don't know half these people. No, I think half. <laughs> I don't know any of these people. <laughs> I know Doug. Yeah, that's it. Okay, you know, you know I know I know I know Schnee. Um, but like I talked to Cyril Cyril Richards, who's the the main promoter right. of the company. Um, I talked. To, I must have had three conversations with Cyril before I knew it was Cyril, because oh. I never I'd never seen a picture of him. So I was just talking to this dude. No, I. I I saw him on like a video from uh, Rope to Rope. Okay, yes, and yes. And even when I saw him in person, I didn't know it was him. Oh no, no. So like, I had like three conversations with this guy, and then I asked Doug. I was like, "Can you point out Cyril to me?" And he points at the guy I've had three conversations <laughs> with, and I was like, "Shit." <laughs> So, like, as as you guys can probably imagine, I'm, like, I, I'm just a ball of fucking nerves. I'm just, like, a bottle of water in each hand, just, like, chugging it so I don't gag on my own fear. Mm. Like, like, it was it was not good. Um, I, I was, was the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nick, see, Nick had my fucking back, at least. Oh, Put, yeah. Putting a camera in my face going, how nervous are you? I'm, like, really <laughs> fucking nervous. You know how nervous I am, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, but uh, but it was but it was actually good because it actually had me laughing a couple of times, which breaks nerves like you wouldn't believe. Mm. So that was good at least. But so we we get into the show. First of all, I'm not wearing anything that you would think any ring announcer anywhere would be. Wearing. <laughs> like I I had on like these 
brown pants that I use for work. And okay, that's fine. That's probably passable. Yeah. But I'm rocking a shirt punch, walking dead crossover t-shirt with the 99% movement. And so I'm just like, I'm wearing a fucking walking dead t-shirt stepping into the ring and i fucked up the ring entry the first time or two yeah you did because i was just like i went to step between the middle and top ropes Mm. and i was just like uh -uh," and i almost fucking fell in and i was just like oh god well i mean to to your to your defense i mean the ropes weren't tightened how they should have been tightened no the ropes were basically um cables they they were cables, but Doug said uh, after the show that uh, that they couldn't get them tightened right. Uh, I see. Well, yeah, and and well, part of the ring was broken too. Like the um, one of the people in the front row when I was going up to announce the next match pointed out this like wire cable that was sticking out from the bottom of the ring, and oh, they yeah? were just like they were just like that's gonna hurt somebody. So I quick just like kicked it back under the ring, oh, and I was shit. just like, thank you, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Because, like, well, if that would have been there in the Battle Royal, somebody falls out in the Battle Royal, slice the back wide oh, open, yeah. right? So, yeah. so that would have been fun. So, you know, the 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 night starts going on, and it the does. first couple of matches come through. Okay, bef- before we get to the matches okay. and the night starts, mm-hmm. uh, you were you were warming up to do your thing. Yes. I, I go out, and Cyril's like, do you want a job? Yes, that's no, no. Actually, that's right. The, the first thing he asked you was, "Are you doing anything? Are you doing anything?" Yeah, and you said and like, no, no. And he was like, "Do you want to do something?" Uh, I'm like, "Sure." <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, "Do you want to be the uh, the bell ringer?" I was like, "Fucking a." Well, <laughs> that's one of the easiest things you can do at the wrestling show. So, so sure, I sat down in the chair by Cyril. He was doing the sound, and I was like, "Ah, oh, cool." like sound like i do sound <laughs> <laughs> so for first match went by you know right like kind of rang the bell kind of all wimpy like <laughs> yeah the ref the ref had to motion to you i think two or three times to actually ring the bell to where he could hear it yeah because the first one was like tink 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 <laughs> well, it was just like uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the second, all the rest of the time. Oh yeah, I was you gave it, you gave that. it a good one, absolutely. Yeah. And after the first match, Sarah was like, "Can can you do sound and ring the bell?" I'm like, "Fuck it, a." <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Nick's wheelhouse. <laughs> so he just left me on on the sound and. <laughs> and ringing the bell, and he went and did his own thing, and Justin was announcing. And it was awesome. It was. It was. It, it, I mean that that debut Twin City Wrestling show really turned into, and we we joked about this, but it it turned into a no holds barred production, damn it, <laughs> because it's like I'm there on the mic, and I'm I'm introducing every match, and and announcing the winners of the matches, and doing the fifty fifty, and everything like that. And and Nick's there. Nick's the only reason that any like uh, entrance videos or music or anything oh, is yeah. playing for anybody. I had it right down so to a T. You would you... announce like where they were from mm-hmm. and their weight, and you say the first name. I would kick in the music. Right. You would say last name. Music was playing. Was... Video was up. Yeah, it was good. It it was. It ended up being. It was uh, like I say for both of us. Even a little bit of nerves early, but then once you settled into it, it was it was good. Uh, and of course, I want to thank the guys for giving me a free T-shirt because after I think the second match, they were just like, "We can't have you going to that Walking Dead T-shirt anymore." He's <laughs> like, "You got to at least look the part." And I was like, "Hey, I didn't know I was going to be doing this." Yeah. <laughs> So if you want me to look the part, motherfuckers, that's up to you. Um, I didn't say that, of course, but. They they brought me over a, a Twin City Wrestling T-shirt that was probably a little bit too small, but whatever. It was just what like is? it's the biggest size you have. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll just I'll just squeeze my butt into it. Um, so at the very least, I got a free T-shirt out of it, which was nice. 
Um, yeah, but that, so you know, we ended up uh, ended up doing doing uh, doing our jobs as part Dude. of uh, Twin City Wrestling. We are, we are we have are officially employed, though not paid, in the professional wrestling business. Sort of, <laughs> sort of, kind of. Um, Hopefully, uh, I'm going to get back to Sarah. Yeah, and be like, uh, you know. Thinking once I get my car back on the road, yeah. Do you need a permanent sound guy? Well, well, you know what? Exactly. Yeah. Why not? I could do it. Why not? I could do it. Save you a whole lot of trouble, and you can organize and run your show. Yeah, exactly. Something one less thing he's got to think about. Yeah. And if he, you know, pays you pays you a little bit of scale or something, then away you go. I don't even care about the pay. Oh, well, there you go, Cyril. Free labor. <laughs> <laughs> Take that up. You might. You can be an announcer. You can come with me. There you go. The road. There you go. Need road leave, wife. Leave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, but to be perfectly honest, talking about the actual show itself. I really loved. That's very good. Yeah, the or- uh, sorry. Yeah, that, that's a little aside. Um, Nick's got a Starbucks refresher, but it's a different flavor. It's the orange mango or orange melon or something, and he seems to really like it. Yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, that's the one I'm drinking now too. Okay, I really loved the way that the show itself was booked, and that's a credit to Cyril and uh, anybody else that may have. Uh, had a hand in actually booking the show mm. because the way they booked the matches, the matches made so much sense. It did. The first ever match in Twin City Wrestling history was Mr. 450 Julius Fantana taking on Narciss Saint. And both of these guys are lower weight lower weight guys. I think Narciss was 200 pounds and uh, Fantana was 175. And they're both like high flyers. And and everything and it's it was it was a fast paced match. It was a good match. I think they went longer than they were supposed to. Yeah, I think they went a good uh, close to fifteen minutes. And every time I felt like okay, cool, this is the opening match. It must be over. One of them would kick out, and I'd be mm. like, oh shit, it's gonna keep going. All right, right <laughs> on. They were really really good together. Aside from one little botch by Fantana when he tried to do the six one nine, but. At the same time, the ropes were really loose, right. so I don't exactly right. blame Fantana for that. Um, but no, it really, really, really good match. Great way to start off the show. Second match was uh, Girl Papa Slash and Mark Maverick, which is two mm-hmm. bigger guys because Mark was two seventy five, yeah, and Girl Papa Slash was billed at three hundred, but I'm guessing he's probably a little bit more than that in reality. Um, great match. Awesome, awesome match! Oh yes, like just there, was, there. There was nothing bad about any of the matches. I don't. I don't think there was either. I. I can honestly say that every match on the card was good. There. There was no. There was no match that you looked at it and it was like, "Wow, man, that really stunk up the joint." You know what I mean? Like there was no real bad match. And this company, just to gush a little bit more about Twin City Wrestling, this company's got some talent in it, like. There, this company has a real good shot if you are around the Maritimes and you give them a chance and go to one of their shows. Mm-hmm. I think for a pure wrestling fan, this company is going to make a lot of fans. Because you had, like I said, the uh, the lighter weight match with Fantana and Saint. You had two powerhouses with Maverick and, uh, and Slash. You had mm-hmm. tag team wrestling. A, just a great tag team match. Oh, and that's why, like... Wonderful. At the end of that match, uh, when I went up to announce the next one, that's why like it just popped into my head, and that was the first thing I said on the mic was, "Who said tag team wrestling is dead?" Because that was a great match. So you know, you had the again the R and R Express, <clears throat> sorry, the R and R Express and um, Glass Action, Action Heroes, Heroes. and uh, yeah. So I mean, you had a great high flyer match, you had a great powerhouse match, you had a great tag team match. Uh, what was fourth? What was the next match? Oh, God. You're asking me? Mm. You're the one that was announcing that shit. It's true. I was just doing the music. At- oh. Sims. I was going off the paper. That's true. Sims and Phoenix. Sims and Phoenix. Excellent match. They work awesome together. 
Uh, Sims is a great talent. Just uh, Doug told me he had a tryout with uh, Ring of Honor oh, really? down in Philadelphia a little while ago. I meant to ask him how it went, and I didn't get a chance to. Mm. Um, but JP, great talent. Sexton, great talent. They had a great match. Mm. Uh, they traded wins over the weekend because uh, Sexton won in the show that we went to, and then JP beat him in Dartmouth. So hopefully that's a feud for the future because I'd really like to see them. I'd like to see them feud with... Um, uh, with the guy that won the title. Yes. I'd, I'd love to see them in a title feud. Uh, so then we had uh, the intermission. They did 50-50, everything like that. And uh, by this point, I'm just like jumping. I'm just like, I'm so <laughs> happy. I'm so happy Doug forced me into doing this. Like I'm just like, I'm so excited to get the show and keep the show going. And and you were. I mean, the crowd was crowd was like, yeah, they were pumped. The crowd was really good. Everything uh, was, that you said, you got reaction to. I did. I tended to get reaction, and uh, they kind of they kind of came down from that after after the intermission, which makes sense. Intermission's always like an adrenaline dump for a crowd, so so that kind of made sense. But mm. but yeah, the um the the crowd was very very good, and uh, Rodney Broom, I'll shout you out on this one. Um, Rodney is. Excuse me, Rodney is the um, the guy that. Uh, well, first he added he liked our page and he added me on Facebook and he added Cyril and I guess he wants to get involved. He wants to actually try to train and get in the ring, which is kind of uh, cool. Yeah. Sweet. And uh, he he was one of the most vocal people in the crowd, but is he's one of those guys that wrestling crowds need. You know what I mean? Like they need guys that are involved in it and interested in what's going on and are willing to be loud and be funny and, and uh, yeah. like that. So, so, uh, so he was a great guy and then, yeah, the, the crowd, the crowd was fantastic. I was uh, about between a hundred and 150 people, I'd say. I'll say about there, but it, yeah, it was, it was, it was an excellent crowd. Uh, the show ended or sorry. Um, first, uh, before the show ended, the co-main event, I suppose was, um, Oh my goodness! It was um, dazzling Dick Durning and um, oh goodness, uh, superstar Aaron Matthews. Superstar yes. Aaron Matthews. I was going to call him Mike for some reason. Uh, which, anyways, Aaron Matthews. Yes, Aaron awesome. Matthews. awesome, awesome, awesome eel. Oh awesome my god, eel. so fun, so funny, and just can get a crowd going so easily. The only thing he did to get the crowd going was say he was from Kentville. <laughs> That's it. He was just like, I'm from Kentville, and, and I'm better than you because I'm from Kentville. And everybody was like, boo! But the, the, but they, lo- they loved him, and he was awesome at it. And then Dick uh, is, a, is a good face. He's a good... Um, He's a good, he's a good dick face. No, he's uh, Dick's, Dick's a really good baby face. So he's a good fan favorite, uh, very talented in the ring, and uh, I actually would love to see them continue to feud. I know um, uh, Julius Fantana won the number one contender battle royal in Dartmouth, right? But uh, I would really love to see them continue to feud, um, Dick Durning and um, and Aaron Matthews. Um, which, by the way, when I announced uh, Dick coming into the the battle royal yeah. he was the last person into the battle royal and ended up winning it when i announced him i announced him as dick durling not dick durning did you i didn't realize it until the next day i was like oh crap i i announced him wrong that's not that wasn't cool he must not have picked it up but mm. i felt bad i felt guilt so i had to i had to purge my soul on the podcast and admit that i did that oh well oh well so all told Fantastic show. Fantastic show. Awesome location. Yeah, it was a very good location. It's uh, co- reminiscent of, uh, probably reminiscent of the bingo halls that ECW started in. <laughs> but like, yeah, ver- a very good location can fit probably at most 200 to 250 people. Yeah. Um, I mean, e- if, but you wouldn't if want they that started many. off down at the down at the arena mm-hmm. in here, it just wouldn't have been the same. No, and I don't think they would. I don't think they would have gotten enough fans for the debut show for the very first show yeah. to make that worthwhile. Oh, yeah. Like uh, UCW had a name, so UCW could actually draw that many people to f- sort of fill that. But it's not going to take Twin City Wrestling very long to earn enough of a name to fill 
the Bridgewater Arena. Oh God, no! The, uh, I, I tell you, I I'll, I'll even I'll even go ahead and predict it. Six months, six months time, they'll have that arena filled, guaranteed. Just because the talent is is too good, it's people that love wrestling. Clearly, so six months time, they will have that arena filled. So. Don't let me down, guys. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fantastic experience. I think for both of us uh, that we both got to uh, be involved in the show. We got to be involved in the after show picture, yeah, which was cool. We actually which got to get awesome. in the ring and and be part of the after show picture. And um, I can't remember who had somebody had JP Sims up on their shoulder yeah. and basically dropped Sims on me because <laughs> they didn't know I was behind. I was like kind of behind them and to the side. So he backed up to like let him off on the turnbuckle mm. and bumped into me and must have thought I was the turnbuckle because he like dropped JP and I had to catch. Him. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was pretty, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, just, just a great show all around. And speaking of great shows. Uh, we have a pay per view coming up. Yes, that looks like it could very well end up being a good to great show. Because it's off actually that day. So, oh, are you nice? We, we can stream. We it. should stream it exactly. We won't pay for it. That's just crazy. Oh, God, no. But we will stream it. Um, yeah, and it, it 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 looks like it's actually a show that they're basing on matches, which is nice. <laughs> Always nice when a wrestling show has wrestling matches. Of course, we're talking about WWE Extreme Rules 2013, and this portion of the podcast will serve as our preview of this event. This takes place on Sunday, I believe it's May the 19th, I want to say. Sounds right. Something like that. Extreme Rules 2013, uh, so we'll start, uh, might as well start on the pre-show, uh, and we're only going to waste about 10 seconds on this. Um, it was announced during Raw last night, I think, that The Miz and Cody Rhodes are just going to be having a regular one-on-one singles match on the pre-show. Why? Why not? <laughs> That's how I answer that question. Okay. Why? Why not? Um, Your logic sounds sound to me. <laughs> exactly. Your logic is infallible. Um, who wins? Between Miz and Rhodes? Yes, sir. Um, uh, probably Miz. I think it's probably Miz, too. Because um, C- Cody Rhodes is m- mainly the person who always loses in the tag team. And uh, hmm. and Damian Sandow wins. Okay. So I based it off of that. Fair enough. Um, yep, I'll buy that for a dollar. We'll, we're, we'll both take Miz. Okay. So we both take Miz on the pre-show. Hooray, we're already 1-0. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, moving on. Moving on. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Fandango. This is, of course, a WrestleMania you rematch. You said my name wrong. Fuck you. Um, yeah, a rematch from WrestleMania. Uh, these two haven't had a match against each other since WrestleMania. They've barely had any physical contact since WrestleMania. They did a dance-off this yeah, week. Yeah, they did a dance-off last night, which ended up not being a dance-off at all. Um like, it feels to me like the feud has been kind of back and forth between the two of them. Like, Jericho will have the one up one week and Fandango will have the one up the next week. Yeah. But, like, I don't I don't get this, these feuds that have, like, no physical contact between the two people. I don't know. Uh, for whatever reason, I, it just bugs me. Maybe it shouldn't, but it does. And uh, Fandango's post-WrestleMania buzz has almost completely worn off. Oh, yeah. For sure. Like, the couple of weeks after WrestleMania, it's like, Fandango's music would play and the place would pop, right? The place would, like, blow up. Now it's just kind of like you have the odd person in the crowd that's Fandangoing, and everybody else is just kind of like, really, are we still doing this? It's like <laughs> it's like the Brodus Clay syndrome. Yeah. Like, Brodus Clay was awesome for a couple of weeks, and then everyone was just like, yeah, funk is on a roll. Uh, <laughs> and that was and that was Ow. pretty much it. Ow. <laughs> hey, 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 yo! Somebody call my mama. It's about to get funky up in here. Uh, anyways, um, so is there really much of a reason to care about this? I guess is my question. No, not not overly. No, other other than to see 
two guys that actually can wrestle, and if they actually let them go and let them wrestle, um, then it'll probably be a good match. Other than that, probably not a ton of reason to care about this match. Um, Chris Jericho is going to win. You got Jericho? Yeah. I think I'll probably take Jericho to avenge the WrestleMania loss. Um, unless they want to continue with this feud, if they want to continue with the feud, which I don't necessarily think they should, but they if shouldn't. they want to, it's dumb. Yeah, true enough. But if they want to, I think Fandango wins the match. So if Fandango wins again, the feud's going to continue. If Jericho wins, then it's probably over. Okay. Um, is this even a hardcore match? I don't think so. I didn't think so either. So you call in your pay-per-view Extreme Rules, and the first two matches we've talked about don't have any kind of stipulation or anything attached to them. Okay, well, let's see where you go from here, (laughs) I guess. Uh, Randy Orton versus The Big Show. This is match number three we're going to talk about. Randy Orton versus The Big Show in an Extreme Rules match. Yay, Extreme Rules match. Yay. Hardcore. Ooh. H-core. Um. This is another feud that's kind of, sort of been indirect, except it's been a lot of Big Show punching Orton in the face. That seems to have happened, like, two, three times. Yeah. Big Show just, like, comes out of nowhere. I always find it so funny when Big Show sneaks up on somebody. It's like, you're seven feet tall and, like, 8,000 pounds. How do you sneak up on somebody? (laughs) But all these, everybody's just like, and they turn around and they catch Big Show's face, or Big Show's uh, fist in the mush. Mm. And and it's just like, how do you keep sneaking up on people? (laughs) In any case. um, So, but yeah, there hasn't been a whole heck of a lot of action between the two. They've both been like, well, Big Show, I don't really remember. Big Show hasn't even really been wrestling anybody. No, he's just been here and there. Yeah. Doing cameos. Exactly. Well, whereas like Orton at least has been wrestling like Damian Sandow and um, Antonio Cesaro and actually wrestling people. And then Big Show will just show up and punch him in the face. And it's just mm-hmm. like, how annoyed must Orton be at this point? <laughs> it's just be like, I just had an awesome match and turns around. Ding. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> Why do you keep sneaking up on me? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, but yeah, so Big Show hasn't even really been wrestling. Uh, but you know what? At least this is actually a hardcore match. Yeah. At the very Which least. Which is good. It is. It is, for sure. It makes me a little bit happier. Makes you a little bit happier in the pants? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, who who do you got in this one? Big Show. You got Big Show? Yeah. I want to take Big Show because I feel like if Big Show doesn't win, he's going to verge on being kind of irrelevant maybe like well i got nothing left to go to right well yeah if exactly he does. yeah that's fair um yeah i like that i can get behind it um I, originally i kind of thought big Sh- uh not big show randy orton might win but because because it's randy orton and i feel like i feel like wwe has to do something to put randy orton back in the title picture it just feels weird that he's not there okay so, but so like originally I was thinking that, but no, I could I could get behind Big Show winning. So I think I think we're all on. I think we're both on the same train so far, in terms of match predictions. Gravy train. It better be a gravy train. If we get one wrong, we're going to get them all wrong. Uh, guaranteed. Okay. It's like one of uh, Mr. Matthews' science tests. <laughs> That's a throwback to high school. Anyways. Uh, next match is Sheamus and Mark Henry in a strap match for some reason. Uh, but at least it's a strap match and strap matches are kind of cool. We don't see them very often. No, not really. No. Um, we haven't seen a strap match in WWE since 2010. Uh, and that was JTG versus Shad Gaspard. Hmm. Yeah. That long. Massive superstars. Massive. JTG and Shad Gaspard, who, if you didn't know, used to be the tag team Crime Time. And if you don't remember who Crime Time is, Crime Time is basically the Prime Time players, but with street cred. Mm. <laughs> it's basically the same fucking team. Like, it's it's basically the same gimmick, but except one does graffiti and the other just touches each other. Um I'll, I'll I'll leave it up to your imagination to determine which one is which. Uh, so Sheamus and Mark Henry in a strap match. Um, has this feud been kind of silly? 
Seamus and Mark, like the way that the way that the feud has gone about. Yeah, I. I mean, I I don't really. Mark, pretty much. Yeah, that's why I think about that. Yeah, Mark. I mean, Mark Henry is a good talent for what he is, but he's not like objectively, he's not a great talent because he's limited in the ring, but. For what he is, which is a big guy and and a strength guy, he's a good talent. But you know, you put whenever you have a feud where you have two big powerhouse guys, you got Sheamus who's a powerhouse, and you got Mark Henry who's a black powerhouse. <laughs> and and <laughs> that was a, that was that was a little treat there for my for our buddy Gabe who was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Um. When you have matches like that, is it is it going to be good? Like, is it going to be a good in ring match? Probably not. Is this going to be a good strap match? Maybe, possibly. I don't know. Neither one of these guys have ever been in a strap match before, to my knowledge. So I don't know. It might be. It might not be. But it's just like it's a lot of, just like a lot of like tests of strength and. And all this other bullshit. Like, are we are we supposed to believe in any way, shape, or form Sheamus is stronger than Mark Henry? Oh, God, no. But that's what the way that they've done the feud is trying to make you believe, right? Like, he beat he beat Mark Henry in a tug of war, or he or he almost did, or he almost beat him in a arm wrestling match. Like, it's just it's been kind of silly. It's been kind of dumb, right? Because like, why why even go that direction? We know Mark Henry is stronger than Sheamus. But why try to make us believe that Sheamus is, you know, comparable in the strength department? Anyway, because it's the WWE and anybody can do anything. Anyone can do anything. Zack Ryder will be the next world heavyweight champion. God, yeah. Always. Always. Woo, woo, woo. I'm reinventing myself. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, so you got. Henry is a powerhouse. Sheamus is a powerhouse. Henry's limited, and Sheamus is well, Sheamus. Uh, <laughs> coughing in the microphone. That's good podcasting. Oh yeah. Um, who wins this match? Uh, Remember to win to win a strap match. You have to drag your opponent to all four corners and touch all four corners in succession. Mark Henry. I think it's going to be Mark Henry. I think Mark Henry just knocks him the fuck out and drags him around. Yeah. I, or at least, at least, if wrestling was logical, that's what would happen. Um, I hope Mark Henry wins this match because this is not a match that Sheamus needs to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. To keep Mark Henry relevant, I don't think he should lose a strap match to somebody that's weaker than him. So, I, I, we'll we'll both go with Mark Henry, hoping that logic wins the day but it probably won't for sure hey moving on moving on sir Here we have kofi kingston versus dean ambrose yes for the u.s championship i am very excited to see one of the members of the shield go for a title matter of fact all the members of the shield are going for titles on this event they are so, but we'll start with ambrose uh i'm again i'm very very excited for this um kofi is a guy that, like, I like Kofi's in-ring. He's flashy, but I don't dislike it. You know what I mean? It's actually a good flashy style, as opposed to, like, Rob Van Dam, who I'm just not a fan of at all. <laughs> um, so I like his in-ring style, and, I mean, Dean Ambrose is super, super talented. Oh, yeah, for like, sure. He's so uh, did you see the match from SmackDown from a couple of weeks ago, uh, Dean Ambrose and Daniel Bryan? I don't believe I have. Fucking awesome match. So good. Like, they they worked with each other. So, it was just a straight singles one-on-one match. So good together. Like, they were great. Um, I guess I will have to uh, exactly. YouTube that out. Go back and TiVo that shit. Oh, yeah. Or YouTube it or whatever. Do something. See Whatever's. that match. Um, but, yeah, so Dean Ambrose and Daniel Bryan was a great match. So we know how good in the ring Dean Ambrose is. And now we get to see him on pay-per-view in a one-on-one match. So I'm very, very excited to see that. Um, who wins it? Who wins it? Who's got it? Um, Kofi, Kofi or Dean? Do we have a new U.S. champion or do we not? I think we do. 
I think, I honestly think that uh, every member of the Shield is walking away with a title. I think so. I think the Shield is walking out with the U.S. title and the tag team tag team championships. The tag team championships. Their time is now. Exactly. Your time is up. Their time is now, as Cena's theme yeah. song says. Yeah. Except not for Cena. Except maybe for Cena. We'll have to find out later. God no. Uh, so that not that, for Cena. <laughs> that kind of uh, blows our prediction for the the tag team championships. King Hellbell we'll versus the Shield. Raising exactly. rolling in a tornado tag. In a tornado tag match, tornado. which is good. For those of you that don't know, tornado tag match means everybody's in the ring at the same time. Potato. Potato. A potato tag <laughs> match. Peel them, mess them, stick them in your mouth. Exactly. Potato. Stick them in a stew. Um, I, I just, uh, the the gimmick for this match, the tornado tag match, fits so well into this whole rivalry because it's always been like the shield gets strength in numbers and everything, but it's it's tornado tag, so everybody's going at the same time. Absolutely. So it really plays into that, and I, we're, we're both on the shield. We're both on for the that, shield. To take the titles? Yes. Do we expect Ambrose to interfere in that match? Probably not. No? No. Do you expect the other members of the Shield to interfere in Ambrose's match? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be wise because he would get squalled. Yeah, could could quite possibly. That's true. But even just to like cause like a little distraction or something like that. I don't know. Quite I, possibly. I, I, I kind of possibly maybe sort of see that happening, <laughs> which I think technically puts it at like 2%, but whatever. Uh, so we're on the Shield. Uh, we're on Ambrose to win the U.S. title and the Shield to win the tag titles. Correct. All right, Brock Lesnar versus Triple H uh, in a steel cage match. <laughs> um, I actually like the fact that they're actually putting some, putting a little something extra into this feud. Oh yeah, it's actually made me. It, it, some stuff's been kind of silly, but it's actually made me, especially what happened last night, has made me interested in seeing this match because it's made Brock look vulnerable for the first time, mm. like not in a match. Like Brock was made out to look like a total powerhouse, and then Cena just beats him, right? And then he's like, "Oh, I'm still a total powerhouse," and then Trips beats him. Like, but like for the first time, they're making Brock look vulnerable, which is good. Because it makes you interested in the actual match. Oh, for sure. Who'd have thunk it? Wrestling psychology in a wrestling company. <laughs> Who'd have fucking thought it? Jeebus. Um, Jeebus squeeze us. Um, what, in your opinion, makes a good cage match? Is there something that you want to see in almost every cage match that you can think of? Like, there's, if there's, is there one spot in a cage match? One spot in a cage match? Mm hmm. Like somebody maybe getting hit in the head with the door, or I always like in a cage match where they would go and climb to the top of the cage, mm-hmm. you know, before they crawl out. Right. And instead of crawling out, they would splash back in the ring. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or jump off and clothesline. Right. I think, well, I think the clothesline is the one that's going to be more likely in this match. I can't see either one of these guys just being like, moonsault. (laughs) And we need blood. (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's Brock and Trips. There will be blood. Yeah. But uh, (laughs) I think what I would love to see is I would love to see Brock climb to the top of the cage and do a shooting star press a la he did to Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 19 and like broke his neck and shit. Yeah. I, I would just love to see Brock because his, his shooting star press looks so ridiculous that it's just like I just really want to see him do it one more time. <laughs> but this time from the top of a cage. Um, Who wins this? Trips. You got trips? Yep. Well, it's 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 the rubber match in, in the feud, right? So... I'm I'm actually going to go against you. I'm actually going to go Brock. Because I think Brock is the one that, like, Brock is the one where they need to continue him. Like, right? Like, he's he, he's going to be going on to bigger and better things, and Trips is kind of winding down. I think, I think it'll, I actually think this will be a really good match, but I'm actually going to go Brock. We have our first dissension in the ranks. Okay. I'm going to go Brock. Okay. Co-main event, which was originally a triple threat match. For the World Heavyweight Championship, but uh, Ziggles got himself a mad concussion, so Ziggles is out of the match, and it is now a number one contenders match for the World Heavyweight Championship, an I Quit match between Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger. Which really, Jack Swagger? Who cares? People are kind of not caring about it anymore, and I can see why, because yeah. WWE ran with it for a little bit. 
they they really didn't run with it. I mean, they they put it out. They said, okay, this is what you're doing. You're going to talk all this hype, but you're not going to back it up. Right. Exactly. And like, what what the hell kind of storyline is that? Right. It's like we're we're going to give you this mouthpiece in Zeb Coulter, and he's an awesome mouthpiece. But after the first month or so, we're just not going to let him talk anymore. It's just like, but, but, but no, the reason Paul Heyman's so good is because he talks every week. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, the reason people don't like Paul Heyman is like every week, if Paul Heyman comes out, it's like, oh, shit, well, here comes another <laughs> speech. Right? Like, here comes another speech. But but Coulter hasn't really cut any decent promo in the last month because he hasn't been allowed to. So it's just like, oh, we're going we're gonna to highlight Jack Swagger's in-ring now. And it's like, okay, well, his in-ring is good, but the thing that made this character so hot was Coulter's promos. True. And not only did they kind of stop his promos, they, they didn't go nearly as far with his promos as they should have. Like, Coulter at some point should have gone on his YouTube page and should have just been like, all fucking Mexicans need to die or something. Like, like really go. Like, if you're going to do it, Fucking do it. Yeah. And that's what used to make WWE great, because WWE would go there. WWE had people fucking corpses. <laughs> like, they would go there, right? But they they won't do that now, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um. So this is basically a submission match, because both guys' finishers are submission holds. So it's basically a submission match. Um. Doesn't really fit with the event all that much, like Not extreme really. rules. It's a Ooh. submission match, but I mean, this it, it, it's gonna it's gonna be a hardcore match too because it's gonna be like I'm gonna choke you with this chair until you say you quit. <laughs> so like you know, it, it is gonna be kind of hardcoreish, but whatever. Yeah. Um, who wins it? Del Rio. You got Del Rio. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably Del Rio. I don't think they're not. Re- they're really not ready to turn. Um. Ziggler face so they they need a face to to go with them so I think it's probably Del Rio too yeah so we're back on track we're back with Del Rio Woo. main event of the evening John Cena versus Goldberg in a last man standing match for the WWE championship sorry that's Ryback uh, John Cena versus Ryback in a last man standing match for the WWE championship this feud is weird to me sometimes because it feels like they don't really know what they want the feud to be. I don't know. Like it's just like I, I, I severely dislike you, but I also I respect you a lot, and we're still kind of buddies, but but we're not buddies, and we'll have backstage conversations instead of beating each other up. It's just like what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Neither of you seem to have a killer instinct, and Ryback is supposed to be this monster, so. The feud is kind of weird to me sometimes. Um, it makes no sense. Yeah. Um, do you see Cena's injury, his Achilles injury, playing any, any role in the match at all? Well, I guess. I mean. It could. Maybe. It could. Possibly. I maybe. Feel, I feel like possibly. maybe. Possibly. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> I feel like maybe, maybe possibly seriously they might um, – try to like integrate his ankle injury like into the finish or something like that but of course can't say that for sure um who wins this is it ryback's time i think it is i think you know what i'm totally with you i think it is too i think they take the belt off cena i think they give cena a couple of months to recoup i think uh goldberg uh runs through uh whoever decides to step up and challenge for the title next i don't know who it's going to be I actually see Ryback and CM Punk feuding again. Really? When CM Punk comes back. Because not that CM Punk is going to be brought back as a fan favorite, because I don't think he will be. Yeah. But I actually see them feuding again when when Punk comes back. That's a good sort possibility. Of like, sort of like a heel versus heel feud, which can be done really well because Punk just make fun of him. Yeah. Just, just constantly. Absolutely. <laughs> so, oh, that's, well, right on. We're both on Ryback. We both think it's Ryback's time. Whoa. We both think Del Rio's going to beat Swagger. Uh, we split on the cage match, and I think we were in tune with everything else, 
Pretty much. So the only thing that we split on was the cage match. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for another week of the Last Fan Standing podcast. I am Justin. And I am Nick. We are No Holds Barred Productions. Like us on Facebook, uh, noholdsbarred.net63.net. You can find all of our shit there. Um, big thanks one more time to Twin City Wrestling, uh, Cyril Richards and Doug Robar for getting us involved in the show. Absolutely. And, and all the talent with Twin City Wrestling, too. You guys are all great. It was awesome. Uh, can't wait for you guys to come back in June. We'll have more details on that show as they become available, as we're kind of the Twin City Wrestling mouthpiece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were out skis for another week, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing a double dip next week to get caught up on the one that we missed. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you later. Later, everybody. <laughs>